Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the blood gas barrier and sort of gave ourselves an introduction and a bit of an intuition around what this is and why it's important. In this video, what I'd like to do is delve a little bit deeper into the actual just structure of the barrier. Um, so we're going to look at actually how this is made up because as I mentioned in the last video, well, this sort of diagram here is a good, a good way to look at the physiology. It breaks, it makes it quite simple to sort of draw arrows of CO2 going this way and oxygen going this way. It, from an anatomical perspective, it's, it's actually not that accurate. So we're going to look at s s these two other diagrams, which I've drawn, and we'll look at um, actually the structure of this barrier. Um, and then at the end, we'll just, as I said in this last video, we're going to sort of track the path of an oxygen molecule all the way from being in the alveoli to binding to the hemoglobin. And we're going to label all the parts that it has to diffuse through to, to get to that point. Okay, so let's get right into this. As I said in the last video, the, these, um, these capillaries, these alveolar capillaries, uh, sorry, these pulmonary capillaries uh, are really sort of embedded in the walls of the alveoli. Um, and this diagram here sort of quite nicely depicts that. So let's zoom in a little on this. And we'll see here that we have, what, what color have I got going here? Let's, uh, okay, so we have, here would be our alveoli. And you can see the blue that we did in the last image. It's consistent here. This is the blue alveolar wall. Um, it's not actually blue, but I'm just drawn it this way. Um, and then the capillaries, and then these are actually individual red blood cells. So you're starting to see the, perhaps the scale we're getting to here. Um, these are individual red blood cells, sort of squeezing their way through these capillaries. Um, and these are all alveoli here. So these are alveoli, alveoli. All right, so you can start to see how really the surface area here where there is an interface between gas and blood is pretty big, right? We have all of this area here, all of this area, all of this area, all of this area. So you have a really huge surface area, which is one of the key things to sort of take away here is that firstly, we've got the scale here. This wall is extremely thin um, and that the surface area where there is a communication between gas and blood is enormous, right? So we, as we label four, this is alveoli, then here we have the capillary, and then the contents of the capillary. So this is just a better structure of what it looks like. In, in This is a cross-sectional picture. Now, just to give credit where this is due, um, this is, I actually just sort of sketched this um, from a, a microscope image in West's respiratory physiology, John B. West, Respiratory Physiology, The Essentials, sort of the gospel on respiratory physiology. Um, and yeah, that's, I just sort of sketched this from there. So that's an image of that. And you can see how the capillaries are really in the walls of the alveoli and there's an enormous surface area. Let's go down to zoom in a little further. Um, and we'll see now we have sort of one red blood cell and we have our, um, our wall here. So this is the same, the blue is the alveolar wall. The orange is the sort of capillary, and this red here is the red blood cell. So we've zoomed in again, and we'll start to identify some of these structures here. So that if you can see up in this top corner here, it's the same image. The blue is the alveolar wall, orange, capillary, red, red blood cell. So, and we said in here was alveoli, an alveolar airspace. So if we're sitting out here, we are inside the alveoli. This is gas, right? Gas. This is the in, internal contents of the alveoli, which is gas, humidified gas, which we bring in from the atmosphere. It's got oxygen in it, it's got nitrogen in it. So we're inside the alveoli in this black space here. And then this is the wall of the, the alveoli, which this sort of gas molecule is in. And then there's the capillary. And then down here would be another alveoli. This is just the wall of that alveoli. So this is just gas again. Right, so this wall here is separating this gas space in this gas space. So let's label some of these structures. As I've mentioned a number of times, this is the alveolar wall, this blue thing. So let's label that. And it's actually called uh, a type one uh, alveolar cell. Um, 
which implies there's more than one type of alveolar cell, which there is, there's two. Um, we'll get to the second type later on. That's more for secretion of surfactant. Um, so this is epithelium. So this is alveolar, alveolar epithelium. Okay, that's that blue structure. And um, if we sort of track this back, we can see that it gets to up here and there's this sort of weird purple blob. This is actually the, the nucleus of that cell. Nucleus of type one alveolar cell. Uh, these are also called pneumocytes. You might see them called pneumocytes, so I'll write that. Pneumocytes. So it could be a type 1 pneumocyte. Yep, so that's the wall of this alveoli. Interestingly, um, you can sort of see how there's a, the central body of the sort of genetic material, the nucleus over here, and then it's a sort of extension that goes across the wall of the alveoli, which is this blue... Um, uh, alveolar cell and it really sort of extends a long distance across the wall. Um, interestingly, when anatomists first looked at this, that they thought that this blue alveolar cell uh, didn't have a nucleus. They thought it was an anucleic cell because when they looked at images of it, they couldn't see a nucleus anywhere. But then as they panned out more, they found that they did have this nucleus, but just had these long sort of protoplasmic extensions which stretch a long distance across the wall of the alveoli. So really, this is the sort of lining, the wallpaper, as it were, of the alveoli, it are these alveolar epithelium, which is made up of type 1 alveolar cells. So what's the next thing we have? We have this sort of space here between the alveolar cell and this capillary, which we know is here. So what's that? So this space, right, we'll draw it over here just for the sake of real estate here. This space right here is uh, interstitial, it's interstitial fluid interstitial fluid or sometimes called the interstitium or another name it's got a lot of names is the extracellular matrix extracellular matrix which is kind of a cooler name i like the name matrix um <laughs> So yeah, so that's the sort of space between this cell and the next cell, which is why it's a sort of inter, intercellular fluid, as it were. Um, so the space between the two cells, it's filled with fluid, interstitial fluid, and um, that's the kind of sort of gap between the two cells. Normally it's not, it's pretty small, and it's more of a potential space, but it's, it's key to know that it exists because in certain conditions that can become engorged with fluid and actually widen. Um, and we'll learn in our diffusion videos why that's bad. So the next structure we have here is our, um, our capillary cell. So this is um, capillary endothelium. Let's write that. Capillary endothelium. And we talked about the space, capillary endothelium. Then we get into the blood vessel. So inside the blood vessel, the fluid within the blood vessel is plasma, a sort of straw colored fluid in the, in, the, in the blood vessel. And then floating sort of passengers in that fluid, floating through the bloodstream are red blood cells, which are what makes the blood look red. Um, red blood cell. And there's other structures in here which we won't go into. It's it's not vital for the understanding of, of this video. There's obviously like platelets and different types of other cells, but for now we'll just focus on this red blood cell. And then within the red blood cell, a hugely important concept is hemoglobin. And I haven't drawn very many because it would take me all day to draw the actual number, but there are millions and millions of hemoglobin molecules within each red blood cell. Okay. And then this purple blob here again is a nucleus, but it's the nucleus of this of capillary, of this capillary cell. So let's draw that. Nucleus of capillary cell. Okay, so we have, there's quite a few structures in here really. Let's just label the hemoglobin a second. Hemoglobin. 
Um, so we can see how we have this alveolar wall, the space between the alveolar wall and the capillary wall. Then there's this sort of fluid inside the capillary. Then you have the red blood cell and then the hemoglobin. So let's now just sort of track the path there. Like we said we would in the last video, let's track the path of an oxygen molecule that has to get from the alveolar gas into um, and bind into the blood cell, red blood cell, and bind to the hemoglobin. So let's just kind of get ourselves a color here. Let's take green, sure. So we want to go from the alveoli to the hemoglobin. Now this process is called diffusion, and we'll talk about this a little bit, in, well, a lot in the next couple of videos. But just sort of take my word for it now that this process is diffusion. So the little oxygen molecule is going to start in the alveolar gas. So it's in the alveoli to start. Okay? And then it's going to go from the alveoli. Where does he have to go next? Well, or she, I guess. I, I don't know what gender oxygen molecules are. Um, so it has to diffuse across this wall of the alveoli. So it's got to go diffuse across the type 1 alveolar cell. Type 1 alveolar cell, right? Then where does it end up? Once it's got that far, it's going to be in this interstitial fluid, right? So it's got to diffuse across the interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid. Then where does it have to go? Well, now it's got to get across this next part of the barrier, which is the capillary endothelium. So capillary endothelium. And, and then we're into the plasma. It's got to dissolve, not dissolve, diffuse through the plasma. Then where's it got to go? Well, it's got to go through this, mem this, this sort of cell membrane of the red blood cell here. So um, let's go RBC cell membrane, right? It has to diffuse across that, otherwise it's not going to get to the hemoglobin. Then it's got to diffuse through the sort of internal fluid of the red blood cell, the sort of red blood cell cytoplasm. Right? No, that's not very neat. Cytoplasm. And then finally, it can bind to the hemoglobin. So let's zoom out a little. So this really is the path that one oxygen molecule, oops, let's undo that, one little oxygen molecule in the alveoli to get to the hemoglobin and be distributed around the body to feed our tissues. This is the path it has to take. It has to go from the alveoli through the alveolar wall into the interstitium, through the capillary wall into the plasma, across the red blood cell membrane, through the red blood cell fluid, and then bind to the hemoglobin. So it's actually quite a long distance in terms of this number of structures that have to be diffused across. And knowledge of this sort of breakdown, knowledge of this pathway, as it were, is really very useful when you start looking at pathophysiology and start looking at diseases. Because if something gets thickened or there's extra extracellular fluid or uh, by knowing when things go wrong with certain factors here, knowing how that's going to affect the diffusion of oxygen or diffusion of gases through the lung. So knowing this pathway is really quite important. And if you can just get that memorized, well, not memorized, memorized is the wrong word. Just know by knowing the structures and knowing the physiology, you can work it through in your head and know what the pathway is for oxygen to get from the alveoli to the hemoglobin. And this is really very important.